Go ahead and stop the video here for a couple of minutes and try to answer this question. Explain why the symbol for an atom of the element oxygen and the formula for a molecule of oxygen differ. The symbol for an atom of oxygen is O. Remember, an atom is the simplest form of an element. So um, atoms always come one at a time. But a molecule is when I have more than one atom. So a molecule of oxygen is O2. And the reason that, um, mole that oxygen um, molecules come two at a time, or that oxygen, when it's found on Earth, uh, is, has the atoms paired in a molecule, is because the atoms are more stable as a molecule of O2 than they are as individual atoms of oxygen floating around. And that's often true of nonmetals. Um, nonmetals are often found uh, in pairs, or in the case of sulfur, it's S8. In the case of phosphorus, it's P4, so four atoms at a time. But generally, um, the atoms come more than one at a time uh, because they're more stable that way. So an atom of a substance is always just one of that. So we would imagine a one over here, even though we don't write it. Um, and a molecule of a substance is always more than one, in this case two. All right, go ahead and pause the video here and give this one a shot. The molecular formula is the total number of atoms in each of these compounds. So um, we write the least metallic, the, excuse me, we write the most metallic species first. So in this case, what we're looking for is the element that's closest to the center of the periodic table. Um, that happens to be P in this case. So for this one, All right, let's write the molecular formula for this compound. It has atoms of phosphorus, oxygen, and hydrogen. So we have to count them up, and then we have to write them. And the order in which we write the elements is, uh, tells us something about that compound. So we can't just choose any order in which to write the elements. Generally, we write the elements from the most metallic to the least metallic. And what that means is that the, the most metallic element is the one that's further to the left of the periodic table. So those that are further to the left um, usually get put in the front of the table, or the, the, excuse me, the front of the formula. So in this case, we have hydrogen atoms, and hydrogen is, of course, at the very far left. Sometimes hydrogen comes first because of that, and sometimes it doesn't. So hydrogen um, goes first in front of the formula when we consider that formula to be an acid. So if, we, if the formula is an acid, the H is always listed for first. But if a compound is not an acid, and it has a hydrogen atom, or more than one, then they're not listed first. So let's look at a couple of examples here. So um, at this point, we don't know how to identify acids. So I'm not going to go into that, just to say that this first one is an acid. So when I write the formula, I'm going to count all of the atoms, H, H goes first because it's the most metallic and this is an acid. There's three H's and then phosphorus is the next most metallic and oxygen is the least metallic because oxygen is found um, almost at the far right of the table and the further right you are to the table the uh, less metallic the element becomes. So um, the difference between a molecular formula and an empirical formula, oh, I only counted three of these oxygens. There's four, aren't there? P, O, four. So um, the difference between a molecular formula and an empirical formula is um, how many, uh, is the simplest ratio of atoms. So if there's any way that we can take the subscripts of the atoms in this formula 
and divide them by the same number to come up with simpler whole numbers, then that would be considered the empirical formula. In this case, because phosphorus is 1 already, I can't reduce that any further. So the ratio of atoms is a 3. Oops. Three man three to one to four ratio of atoms, and I can't reduce that number any further. So in that case, the empirical formula is always is also H three P O four. That's the simplest ratio of whole numbers that I can have. Let's look at the next one over here. So in this case, I have carbon and hydrogen. And um, when we're looking for the element that's the least metallic, it's true that hydrogen comes further to the left of the periodic table. But we only write hydrogen as the first element if that compound is considered an acid. And this compound is not considered an acid. So we'll write the uh, carbon first. And we have four carbons. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens. So this molecular formula is C4H6. Now how do you know if, an, if a compound is an acid or not? At this point, it's not, um, you're not going to lose points if you put the H first or if you don't put the H first. Uh, but we are going to um, identify acids uh, by looking at their formulas first. So when we see that an H comes first, we can identify that something is an acid. And later in, the, in this term, um, actually, it will probably be in the next term. We're going to look at these compounds themselves, this structure versus this structure, and say, well, how do I know that this one is an acid and this one is not an acid? What is it about where the hydrogen atom is that makes it considered an acid? So we'll look at that later on. At this point, don't really, you shouldn't worry about it, except to say that when um, a formula has an H in front, it's an acid. And when a formula does not have an H in front, then it's not an acid. Okay, so here, again, um, the difference between molecular and empirical is whether I can reduce the numbers in that formula to smaller whole numbers and keep the ratio. So if I divide both of these numbers by 2, then I get C 2 H. 3. So the molecular formula for this compound, and the molecular formula is the, the formula um, of the molecule itself. This is a picture of the molecule. So this is the, the formula of how many atoms are in the actual molecule. And the empirical formula are different in this one because the ratio is a 2 to 3 ratio. And 4 to 6 ratio is the same as 2 to 3. And 2 to 3 has simpler numbers. So this formula should be reduced to C2H3 for the empirical formula. All right, let's look at the next one. Um, here we have silicon, hydrogen, and chlorine. And this one is also not an acid. So silicon becomes the most metallic element in that case. So we'll write the silicon first. And there are two of those. Um, and then the hydrogen. And we have two of those, and then the chlorine. And there are four chlorine. So this one, these numbers can be reduced as well. Two to two to four is the same as one to one to two, if I divide all those numbers by two. All right, and let's look at this last one. Um, again, this is not an acid. It looks just like the one above it, which was not an acid. So this one is also not. So C4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 hydrogens in this one. So C4H8, the empirical formula would be CH2. A 4 to 8 ratio is the same as a 1 to 2 ratio. If I were to divide each of those numbers by 4, I would get 4 divided by 4 equals 1, and 8 divided by 4 equals 2. So this would be the simplest ratio, CH2. 
sometimes when we're looking at empirical formulas, we put them in parentheses and we put a subscript of n on the outside to, to tell us that depending on what n is, we might have to increase these numbers. For this first one, n is 1 because the empirical and molecular formulas are the same. But in this compound, n would equal 2 because I would have to multiply this carbon by 2 to get C4, and I would have to multiply this hydrogen by 2 to get H6. So H3 times 2 would be H6. If I put this one down here in parentheses, what's the value of n here? Well, that one's going to be 2, right? Because I've got 1s there now, Si1, H1, Cl2. And if I multiply those subscripts by, by the number 2, then I will generate the subscripts in the molecular formula. Okay, and here, if I put this with an n on the outside, then n in this case is going to equal 4, because I would have to multiply these subscripts by 4 in order to generate, to turn the empirical formula into the molecular formula.